Hello guys and welcome to one of the most important videos in new season 2 where I'll be going through most of the changes they made, new additions, new buffs, new glitches and so on. Some of them they mentioned in the patch notes and some are secret ones. And to avoid making this video too long, I'll only talk about the big changes that affect the gameplay. I'm actually surprised I finished this video in short time because I worked non-stop to post it as soon as I could and that's how much I love you guys. This video might be too long so this time I added timestamps in the description so you guys can skip to the parts you want but I think you should watch the entire video because everything is important. Let's get started. I'm gonna start with the glitches because I want it to be the first thing that Activision sees if they watch this video. And even though they managed to fix some of the bugs, they added new ones in the process. And sadly the major old bugs are still there. I'm gonna start with the new glitches. First one is the disappearance of the buttons where the players become unable to press either all buttons or some of them. As you can see here, the player can only run, he can't do anything else. Also, everything looks frozen like the minimap and from what I've seen, I believe this glitch happens after landing from the air. Whether you land from a helicopter or after landing from an airborne. And another similar glitch that many players reported was not being able to heal after landing from the revive flight. Next big glitch is related to the movement where sometimes you see the enemies moving too fast and teleporting all over the place. I actually encountered this glitch against a full squad but sadly I wasn't recording. But here's an example from a YouTuber called Hanzu. It's exactly the same so it happens in both MP mode and BR mode. Usually glitches like this happens because of lag or high ping but not this time. As you can see here from the enemy perspective, the ping is normal at 30 ms, so I believe it's a glitch caused by the game itself. After that we have some small bugs and also the big old bugs. First one is a glitch that causes a small freeze after opening your scope. The duration of this freeze depends on the device so if you have a potato device it might last longer. Next we have the seat eject glitch and when I played beta I thought it was fixed because I tested it so many times and I didn't get it. But after playing the actual update I realized it's still there. Third annoying glitch is the black screen which mostly happens to android players and even though they said they will fix it in season 2 sadly this glitch still happens to so many players. We also have a glitch that allows you to go invisible. This glitch happens when using phantom skin, whether it's the original skin or the championship skin. And I'm not sharing this glitch for you guys to abuse it because you will get reported for hacking if you decide to use it. I'm just posting it for Activision to fix it. Next we have the movement changes, so first of all they made the movement smoother and it's really satisfying. And for players with potato devices and low FPS, I'm sorry for you guys because I don't think you will notice the difference. But the biggest change here is they moved the character back to the original position. So last season it was more to the left but now it's close to the center. Another small change that's worth mentioning, now you can slide while running up hills which can help you dodge bullets easier in these areas. Next, we have some important changes to the game mechanics, starting with the revive flight change. So in previous seasons, the last revive flight leaves after the fifth zone countdown. And what I mean by that is this timer here under the minimap. And right at the start of the fifth timer, you get this message saying that the last revive flight has taken off. So this was in the last season, but in the new season, the revive flight leaves at the start of the fourth timer. This is important to know, especially for players playing scrims and tournaments, because now you need to be more careful near the start of the fourth timer and make sure you don't go down. The other important secret change is the duration of the dog tags. So in previous seasons, the dog tags remains on the ground for 120 seconds, which equals to two minutes. And in this season, they increased it by a minute, so now it's at 180 seconds. Next, they changed the movement near supply boxes, so in previous seasons moving next to supply boxes will slow you down so they changed it back and now you can move near them at normal speed and I'm glad they fixed it because it was extremely annoying. Another useful change is the height needed to open your wingsuit. So in the last season you needed to be as high as Snoop Dogg to open the wingsuit but in the new season the height needed is back to normal. Finally a small change that's not really worth mentioning but I added it because I noticed many players are confused about it which is this one. Discarded guns no longer shows remaining ammo. So in the last season any gun that was discarded by the enemy whether you found it on the ground or his loot box after killing him it will show the remaining ammo in the mag but in the new season it doesn't show it.
Moving on to the fixes, Activision fixed many things and I want to thank them for that, especially after they recently made a small patch fixing one of the biggest glitches that came with season 2, which is the camera glitch inside buildings, so once you enter any building the camera zooms out, and when you try to jump the camera suddenly shifts to the sides. But you don't have to worry about that anymore because Activision fixed it and it's probably the fastest fix I've seen so far. Good job Activision. Second fix was done to the hipfire. As I mentioned earlier in the video, last season when using hipfire your bullets goes below the crosshairs. But after the recent update it goes exactly where you aim. And that's really good to see especially for players who rely on hipfire a lot to win close range fights. Next fix is the zipline sound so now you can hear enemies using the zipline which gives you time to react. They also changed the number of FHJ rockets needed to destroy the airdrop flights. Because last season it was random, sometimes it takes 3 rockets, other times 5, and sometimes you won't even be able to destroy it. But now it's back to normal so you only need 2 FHJ rockets to bring it down. And of course destroying these flights will allow you to get the airdrop before everyone else. Next, they fixed the ninja class sound and now it's normal. So after upgrading the ninja class, the user won't be able to hear his footsteps. Finally they fixed most sound issues and it became easier to locate enemies with the sounds. Regarding the buffs in this season, they are game changers. I'll start with the most important buffs. First of all the annihilator buff, so now you can knock enemies with 2 shots only at any distance. Even with a level 3 vest and 150 HP. But here's the thing, the Annihilator has render range of 150 meters, meaning that you can't see enemies beyond that range when using this gun. The second big buff was done to the Tempest, as it received both damage and radius buffs. Same as the Annihilator, the Tempest can kill anyone with 2 shots only at any range. It also has a render range of 150 meters and to be honest I was not expecting these two buffs not in a million years and the reason why Activision buffed them will remain a mystery to me. So this buff makes these two guns better than snipers at mid range. The only difference here is that snipers have better render range so their scope will allow you to see enemies at a very long distance. The next buff was very much needed as they buffed both the accuracy and horizontal recoil of all the guns. The other accuracy buff was done to close range guns including the SMGs and the shotguns. And it's highly noticeable especially on the shotguns. And you will notice that the crosshairs of the shotguns became smaller compared to the last season. That's because the bullet spread became less. So it's a bit harder to aim but at the same time you get a high burst damage that can kill enemies with 1 to 2 shots. And I feel like this buff was needed and it totally makes sense. Next we have throwables buff as they increase their range and now you can throw them to a longer distance compared to the last season. Finally we have sniper's recoil buff, personally I can't tell how good this buff is because I'm the worst sniper in the game, but I'd assume it's a good one because recently I've seen many snipers hitting their targets easier compared to the last season. After the buffs comes the nerfs, starting with the brothers nerf, the AK-47 and the AK-117 as both of them became harder to control. Now in my opinion I don't think they should have nerfed them, I think they should have buffed the other guns instead. I bet that 99% of you guys didn't notice this nerf, but the Trapmaster was slightly nerfed this season and to be exact they reduced the damage. So last season without an upgrade the Trapmaster deals a total of 84 damage and in the new season without an upgrade it deals a total of 73 damage so that's 11 damage less. And after the upgrade in season 1 it used to deal a total of 104 damage but in season 2 the total damage was reduced to 102 so the difference is only 2 HP which is pretty much useless. So it only affects it when it's not upgraded. The final nerf was done to the FHJ as they decreased the rocket speed and I believe they nerfed it to help players with high ping to give them more time to react. Because if you have a high ping the warning will be delayed for you and in some cases you won't even get a warning, especially if you're close to the ground. Other than that they also changed the locking time of the FHJ to 1 second. 
We arrived to the final part mentioning other additions starting with the truck. What makes it special is the high durability and to give you an idea I compared it to the helicopter. So the helicopter can take 2 FHJ shots while the truck can take 4 shots. The other thing that makes it OP is the fact that you can kill enemies with one hit only even at 150 HP. You just need to be at the right speed. The next change is the ability to choose the scope's loot from the settings. Just go to the BR settings and then the loot settings and you will find it in the end. They also made it possible to add pistols to your loadout, so now you can pick them up from the airdrop. 